One more time, let's worship the Lord with a hand clap. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad to see you. By the way, from here, you look beautiful. Amen. I'm not speaking by faith. I'm speaking here by sight. You look awesome. Amen. Shall you be seated in God's wonderful presence? It is indeed a joy to be with you all. We want to welcome those joining us online. We believe the same grace that is in the house will reach you wherever you are, at the balcony and outside. Jesus is Lord. Amen. I am excited, of course, to be uh, back here. Uh, we've been here before. And as Bishop said, uh, my family is with me and they'll be joining us perhaps in the middle of this service. They're coming for the third service. Uh, your father and mom, uh, the Honorable Bishop uh, Jimmy Kimani, is a blessing to me and to my family. And uh, there's no pretense here. They are, we love them. They love us. We know they love us. We enjoy our relationship. Amen. Now, let's get into God's word. Uh, yeah, now you can set my clock so I can, I know we have quite a number of stuff to do today. And I believe we will all be blessed. Amen. Are you ready for God's word? I know for sure you will be blessed. In fact, I want to make a declaration while standing on this altar. That none of you, male or female, young or old, is permitted to live here the same way you came. No, it must not happen. In Jesus' name. Let's, let's say a word of prayer here. Father, we thank you and we bless you. We invite you to speak to us. Cause your glorious voice to be heard by everyone at the sound of my voice, including the many that will hear this sermon in days to come through the social media. Glorify yourself. Again, Lord, we declare our lives will never be the same because you're speaking to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, may I say, this is the ear of the great catch. That is not a suggestion. That is a prophetic utterance. If you believe it, if you embrace it, if you run with it, you will put results on the table. And this morning, I believe God wants to show you the great catch that he has in store for you. Amen. Are we going to be reading from Genesis chapter 49 and verse number 22? And I briefly want to speak to us on a message I'm calling the four blessings of Joseph. The four blessings of Joseph. We will not be able to cover all the four. But I have a commitment to run through blessing one and at least share with this service the second blessing. Amen. Genesis, I said amen. amen. And now you have to work with me. You have to Say an amen, even when I don't have a point. Amen. Believing the, the point is coming. Amen. amen. Yeah, you encourage me while I'm, while I'm uh, allowing God to use me here. So let's, let's have the scripture. Ah, thank you. They've given me a little more time than the first service. Mbarikiwa sana. Let's go ahead. Genesis 49, verse number 22. Uh, if we can project it. And a New American Standard Bible or the Old King James Version. Either one of them will do us good. There you go. Ah, this is wonderful. It says, Joseph is a fruitful branch. A fruitful branch by a spring. Now, do you have the New King James? Do you have the New King James? The New King James Version? Uh, I'm, I'm a teacher and I want to show you some, something specific. That's why I'm a little bit adamant on my text. Uh, okay, this will do. Joseph is a fruitful bow. A fruitful bow by a well. His branches run over the well. Now, the person speaking, these words we are reading are the words of Jacob as he's blessing his children. He blesses Reuben. He blesses Simon. He blesses Asha, Naphtali, and all of them. He has gathered the 12 sons, including the two sons of Joseph, Ephraim, and Manasseh. Remember, blessings are just words spoken from a position of authority. 
And so as he's announcing these blessings, he's writing in the spiritual realm, dictating and determining the future of his children. So as he blesses his son Joseph, he says, Joseph, you are a main, you are a central bow. What is a bow? A bow is the main branch of a vine. He's saying to, jo to, J to, to Joseph, although you are not the firstborn, although you are not the secondborn, although you are not the thirdborn, you are the central bow. You are essential. Wewe ni wakutegemewa. Wewe ni wamsingi. Wewe ndiyo, wewe ndiyo tunategemea katika nyumba hii. I came to speak to somebody. You might be known as the little nobody. You might be the black sheep in the family. You might be that one that they don't like. But this morning, God is identifying you. And he's saying, my daughter. He's saying, my son. You are the main bow. You are essential. You might be a single mom. But God is saying to you, you are the central bow. Is somebody understanding what I'm talking about? You might be a widow. You might be single. It does not matter. He calls you as he sees you. Not according to your now, but according to your future. Because he can see your future. He can see your destiny. And he says, I know what they've called you. But here I am as your father. And as I call you, so you are. You are the central bow. Wewe ni wakutegemewa. Wewe ni wamuhimu. Wewe and he says you are not just a central bow growing anywhere he says a central bow by a well meaning joseph in season and out of season during rainy season during drought season you are always producing you are ever evergreen i came to speak to you as you look at your now it may be drought as you look at your present it may be dry but the lord is calling you by faith you are fruitful in season and out of season you are evergreen can i announce to you you may be in your 60s but he sees you as agile he sees you as still energetic in jesus mighty name Joseph, you are a fruitful bow by the well. Can you give me the scripture? He says, he says something about Joseph. He says, his branches ran over a wall. This guy is like a tree planted by the well. His branches are spreading and they are running over a wall. Listen, I grew up in a neighborhood where they had this 50 by 100 plots. Amen. And they walled them with stone. And then on top of the walls, they put glass, broken glass for security purposes. Are you tracking with me? Uh -huh. So my, neighbor, my friend, they had this neighbor whom they shared a wall. And on the side of my neighbor, they had a pit latrine. Next to the pit latrine, they planted a banana tree. And for some reason, I don't know how, but for some reason... This banana was strong, it grew, it produced very beautiful ripe bananas. Some of the branches actually ran over the wall onto the side of my neighbor whom I frequently visited. Now, you can operate by the gift of wisdom or by the gift of suspicion. As young teenagers, we designed by suspicion that these bananas that are hanging on the side of our wall, in other words, they are in our airspace. They are legally and legitimately ours. And we benefited ourselves from the bananas. I came to announce to somebody, in this year of the great catch, God is not planning to give you trickle-down blessing. No, he wants your blessing to run over. So that you become a blessing, not just me, myself, and I. That your blessings are overflowing to your children and their children's children. That you become a blessing to your parents. Can you imagine that in, your, in their old age, you are their provider. You are their sustainer. You are the one taking care of them. Your blessings are running over. Barakazako zinaongezeka, baka you become a blessing to in-laws who have never accepted you or acknowledged you as a son or a daughter. 
That's what I'm talking about. Blessing running over the wall to the point that like my neighbor, like this neighbor, we were eating his bananas and he didn't he didn't feel disturbed. He didn't feel irritated. He didn't even know he was losing bananas. May God bless you so much that they will steal from your business and you have no idea they are stealing. Because nyingi 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 zaidi ata wakijichotea you have you can't even notice because it's running over the wall. Are you listening to what God wants to do to you? Maybe they are not on this side. Let me see if there is faith on this side. That that's what God is thinking of you. Joseph, Ruth, Wangari, whoever you are, you are essential. You are the main bow and your blessings will run over a wall. I pray for a mother raising children by herself that your blessing overflow even to the neighbors. Yani mpaka area chief anakutambua kwa vile Mungu amekubariki katika jina la Yesu. He says, Joseph, I am blessing you. Now, let's read that scripture. G- give me the next line. He says, look, the archers, the archers are part of the military back in the day who fought using bows and arrows. Not everybody was in horses. There were horse riders. Not everybody was with a spear as footmen. Not everybody had a sword and shield. They used to divide their battalions according to their weaponry. The Bible says the archers bitterly grieved him. They shot him and hated him. Perhaps even as I speak this morning to you, you are feeling harassed. You are feeling shot at. You feel like you are, you've been the target of the people the whole week. In that department, in that office, in that neighborhood, you feel like the archers are shooting at you. They are targeting you. They are fighting you. But though they did this to Joseph, which they did when they threw him into the pit, which they did when they attacked his self-esteem as they negatively spoke of his dreams, which they did as Potiphar's wife falsely accused her and they jailed him for that accusation. Joseph was feeling bitterly accused and hated. But even though that happened, look at the text. It says, the archers bitterly grieved him and shot at him and hated him. Give me the next line. But something happened to Joseph. What's the next line? But his bow remained in strength. And, his, and the arms of his hands were made strong by the Almighty. Imagine this is what he's saying. That though they were attacking him and harassing him and shooting at him and t- taking an aim at him. The Bible says his bow remained strong. It remains strengthened. Another translation, the New American Standard Bible, it says, and his bow remains steady. In other words, much as they were accusing him, much as he was the target, he never wavered. He never shot at anyone. He remained steady. I came to announce to you, in this year of the great catch, the way God is going to smile at you, You will not need to answer your neighbors. You will not need to answer your accusers. You shall remain steady. Paka wanajuliza, mbona tumemsengenya, mbona tumemtukana, mbona tumemripoti, na hatitisiki, hatetemeki, hababaiki, maana ni mbarikiwa wa mungu. Maana mungu amesema yeye ni essential. That shall be your story in Jesus' mighty name. Give me the next line as we read together. It says concerning this Joseph, by the, by, it says, by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob, from there is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. Continue the next verse, verse number 25. By the God of your father, now, 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 pay attention. By the God of your father who will help you, you and, and by the almighty who will bless you. With the blessings. Now, here are the four blessings. He says, who will bless you? With the blessing of heaven above. That is blessing number one. And it is my sincere prayer. It is my honest prayer that in this fellowship, that in this service, God will bless you with the blessings of heaven above. Number two, the blessing that lies, that, that the blessing of the deep that lies beneath. That's blessing number two. Number three, the blessing of the breast and the blessing of the womb. Are you listening to me? 
Remember, this is a guy being blessed. Why is God blessing him with the blessing of the womb and the blessing of the breast? I hope I'll get time to answer that question for you. Now, he says, go to the next line. He says, the blessings of your father have exhaled. They have surpassed. They have overtaken the blessing of my ancestor. Remember, Joseph is kneeling down and Jacob is praying for him and he's saying, the blessing of your father. In other words, my blessing as Jacob, my blessings have overtaken the blessing of my ancestors. Who are these? Isaac and Abraham. So you thought all the way from childhood up to date that Abraham dualikwa amebarikiwa na mungu zaidi. But Jacob here is saying, look at me. When I left home, because of the argument between Esau and Jacob, when he left home, he was running for his life. He had nothing, literally nothing. The guy didn't even have a travel bag. When he got tired on his journey, he looked for a place to sleep and the Bible tells us he took a stone, he took a rock for a pillow. That tells you how bad it was for Jacob. That I'm a travel, na ni wakati wa usiku anataka kulala, na ana hata kamzigo, kakibeti, kabag, ambacho anaweza kutumia kama pillow. Ametafuta jiwe, ametafuta mwamba, njo uwe Hilo yake. Sema kuwa broke. That's how broke he was. But that act was prophetic because the rock he laid his head on was not just a common stone. That act was prophetic. He was laying his head on one known as the rock of ages. He that was from the beginning. No wonder in the middle of the night, he saw a dream. And in the dream, there was a, a stairway coming from down to heaven. And he saw angels ascending and descending. In this service, may your angels ascend. May your angels descend and bring you a blessing that will overtake the blessing of your father. That will overtake the blessing of your ancestors in Jesus' mighty name. So he says, my blessings have overtaken the blessings of Abraham. How do we know he's telling the truth? Because the measure, the yardstick, the SI unit for measuring the blessing of, the blessing of Abraham was as far as he could see physically and spiritually. God told him when they parted with Lord, lift up your eyes. For as far as you can see, I have given thee for a possession. When he, after an year, when he could not have a son and he was asking God, how did you, you said you will bless me. The Lord took him outside his tent. He said, count the stars of the sky for as many as you can see and as much as the sand of the sea, so will I bless you with children. In other words, Baraka za Ibrahimu zilitegemea with as far, how far he could see spiritually and physically. But the blessings of Jacob have no physical limitation they are not as far, they are not they don't go as far as you can see with your physical eyes his blessings are eternal give me the next line let me show you what i'm talking about the next line he says uh uh verse go back to verse 26 26 he says the blessing of your father have excelled the blessing of my ancestors up to the utmost bound of everlasting hills. In other words, my blessing as Jacob, they are not going, they are not limited physically. They go up to the everlasting hills. In other words, even after I die, my blessing continue up to eternity. This morning and in this service, may God remember you. Not just with physical blessings, but blessings that are spiritual. Blessings that even after you have died will continue announcing your name. They'll continue as expanding your boundaries. They'll continue refreshing generations after you. Somebody say amen. amen. That is God's agenda for you. Now give me the next line. It says, uh, uh, speaking about remember, he is blessing him. Now he says, this my blessings 
that have surpassed the blessing of my ancestors, they shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of, of the head of him who was separate from his brothers. He's saying, this my blessings that have overtaken these blessings may they rest on your head Joseph and on the crown of him who is separate you in other words he's saying Joseph baraka za mungu zinakuja juu yako to the extent they shall separate you they shall distinguish you people will know you not because of who you are but because of what God has done over your life your blessing shall distinguish you and this morning i announce from on this altar may your blessing distinguish you may your blessing announce you may your blessing overflow that people recognize you by your blessings now let's go back to verse 25 because that's that's where the meat of this sermon is he says by the god of your father who will help you and by the almighty who will bless you with the blessing of heaven so here are four blessings the blessings of the heaven the blessing of the deep that lies beneath number 3 the blessing of the womb and the blessing of the breast i pray oh god that may someone here live with four blessings may someone here live with three blessings may someone here live at least with two blessings and if not if 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 anything mtu asitoke hapa bila hata baraka moja bwana sifue sana the blessing of heaven this is heavy my friend this blessing of heaven is the blessing of divine protection This blessing says you are uncasable, you are undefeated, you are back in the 90s the song was unbogable. This blessing say you are unbogable. Nobody can be with you, nobody can fight you, nobody can stand against you because the blessing of the heaven overshadows you. But pastor, what is this blessing of the heaven? Can you break it down for me? Yes, I'm glad you're asking. When you look at the heaven, what do you see? Usually you will see three things. mainly number 1 you will see the sun number 2 you will see the moon and number 3 you will see the stars these three f- elements are not just forces of nature these three are servants of god don't underestimate the sun do you know why you have been feeling cold the whole of last week not even showering do you know why it is because of the sun Right now as you are seated here in this church listening to me watching on online the reason it's cold in Nairobi and it's very hot extremely hot where i come from in texas it's because right now here in july 17th we are the farthest from the sun and because we are far from the sun we are feeling the impacts the sun was given power to govern the day this the moon was given power to rule the night nisikilize jameni na unisikie vyema the moon is not just something you see up there the moon is the authoritative figure when it comes to the night and the sun is not just what they told you in form 2 physics that is a mixture of burning gases that's partly true the truth of the matter the sun governs it dictates it rules our life here on earth if there is a space storm in our galaxy which is miles and miles and th- hundreds of thousands of miles away from where we are seated if there happens to be a hurricane if there happen to be a storm up there we will feel the effect seated down here in arobi let me show you how important the sun is Without the sun number 1 wacha hii mnasema unga imepanda without the sun there is no unga at all can you imagine life without food that we are not eating i know we are on a 21 day fast if the sun is non existence forget eating are you understanding number 2 without the sun even if we may have food somehow we all die for lack of vitamin d number 3 if we have too much sun we die of skin cancer 
This is not something to joke about. This is not something to play about. This thing we call the sun governs, it rules the day. Do you know, without the sun, we can't have seasons. In other words, the sun dictates our season. It, it inatwambia when we shall plant. It tells us when we will harvest. It tells us whether we have abundant in our stores or whether we have little or nothing in our stores. The sun decides that. This thing we call time. Without the sun, there will be no time. Meaning, it will be dark throughout 24-7 12 months a year, it will be utter darkness. Oh, you don't want it to be that dark. You don't want it to be that dark. Because if it's that dark all the week, all the month, all the years, my friend, we will all go crazy. As a matter of fact, in the United States, if you do a capital uh, a crime, eh, you kill, or you, we have moved away from... Uh, 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 hanging people. We've, we've stopped that. Death penalty is no longer applicable in most of our states. Because we've discovered there is a better way of punishing criminals. Not the stroke of the king. Eopia, to me here, we have advanced. If you commit a, a capital crime, we arrest you, take you before the judge, then we put you in a maximum prison, and the punishment is, is so simple, but so torturous. We put you in a cell that looks like a silo. Yani nyukuta zimekuzingira all the way from the floor to the ceiling. Hawoni jua mchana usiku, you are in total darkness. Not for a day, not for two days, not... You are in total darkness 50 years. Do you know you'll go blind? Yeah, you'll just go blind by yourself. If you're na ukora wako, unakuwa blind kwa kutoona muangaza. Not only that, total darkness will make you go crazy. When you're incarcerated in total darkness, you start pulling your hair. Why? Because lack of light messes your chemical configuration. It messes what they call hormones. And when your hormones are messed up, you become moody. You have no joy. You, are, you become antisocial. Kwa sababu huoni jua. Unanyelewa? The sun governs the day. In, in Alaska, during winter, they have six Hours of sunlight. Yeni kajua kana tokezea gaivi, kana funga jicho, kana potea for six hours. And then for 18 hours, it's total darkness. Yani unamuka sa saba mchana ni giza tororo. They only have six hours from 2 p.m. up to around 7 nishapo. Then jua tena linapotea. Do you know what happens in Alaska every year, every year when we come to winter? Their suicide rates, depression, and mental illnesses jump up to 75 to 80 percent. Why? Because when you have no light, you become gloomy, you become sorrowful, you become sad. The sun was given power to govern the day. Now, when Joseph is blessing his son, he's saying, my son, I am announcing you are a main bow. You are a central branch planted by the waters. Your branches will spread over and you will be ever fruitful. In other words, you will not produce based on the season because I've commanded the son of the heaven to align itself and favor you. Therefore, Joseph, whether it's January when it's very dry, whether it's April when there is a lot of rain, whether it's November, you shall be fruitful. You shall be producing. The sun shall not dictate your season and you shall not be blessed based on your season. You are blessed in winter, you are blessed in summer, you are blessed in the spring. And I came to announce to somebody in this year of the great catch, God is bringing you to a place where your blessing is not dependent on the season. Ah, in season and out of season, you are blossoming, you are blooming, you are radiating the glory of the Lord. I came to announce as the Lord releases this blessing. Even in your old age, you shall age gracefully. You shall continue blooming. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. That people will not know you have hit 
70. Why? Because the blessing of the heaven, the son has been instructed to favor you. It shall not strike you. It shall not smash you. It shall favor you. Somebody say amen. amen. When he's blessing him with the blessing of heaven, he's saying, Baraka zako hazita jali kama ni jumatatu ama ni jumatano. Maana jua ndio inatenganisha jumatatu na jumanne na jumatano. We utakuwa mebarikiwa. So your days will be beautiful. Your week will be awesome. The sun will favor you. Have you heard people say, mwezi hiko kona? Iko kona kwa sababu the bills with standing and the money in the pocket, the two do not agree. Kwa hivyo, iyo mwezi iko kona. Jacob is saying, as per for you, your mwezi will never be at the corner. The first of every month and the 15th of every month and the 29th of every month, for you it shall be the same. You shall be blossoming. You shall be fruitful. You shall be blessed because I'm commanding the sun to favor you. Ah, this year, may the sun favor you. May the forces of nature work for your favor in Jesus' mighty name. God can do it and God will do it. So he says, my son, as per for you, whether it's planting season, harvesting season, whether it's January or December, whether it's Monday or Friday, you are blessed. By the way, this is a scientific, a scientific fact. We have a doctor here to prove it. Did you know most heart attacks happen on Monday morning? Scientific fact, not my thinking. Scientific fact. Do you know why? Because people party on Friday. They celebrate, oh my goodness, weekend you're here. Saturday, they don't even know themselves wanabebu wakwenda nyumbani. Sunday ni hangover. Jumatatu ikifika. Niende nikafanyie kazi bosi mpendi. Kampuni ambayos ainifuraishi. Their heart attacks them. But I came to announce to you, your Monday shall be as exciting as your Sunday. It shall not matter, matter whether it's a Wednesday. It shall not matter whether it's a Saturday. As for you, every day you wake up, you shall announce, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Why? Because that which distinguishes Monday and Wednesday is working for my good. The sun is working in partnership with me to clear the path, to clear the way, to favor me. Somebody say amen. May the heavens open for your business. May the heavens open for your children. May the heaven open for your marriage. May the heavens open for whatever you lay your hands to do. The blessing of the heaven. Why is he blessing him with the blessing of the heaven? Because he understood Egyptians are notoriously idolaters. And these people can consult the sun, they can consult the moon, they can consult the stars to bewitch you or to work against you. They were so notorious. During the, 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 the plagues, the ten plagues, God was not just throwing plagues, he was hitting different gods that controlled life and the economy and the social life of the Egyptians. He heated them where it mattered most. So when he turned water into blood, he was fighting the God of the Nile. When he turned, when he turned darkness, light to darkness and it was dark 24-7, he was fighting their God of knowledge. When, when he commanded flies all over, he was fighting the God of their livestock. These people, they have a God for everything, including a God for sex. They were notorious. Now, the chief of their gods was the sun God, and his name was On. He was such a mighty God, quote unquote, that, and so proud, that he didn't want you to worship him with vegetables and lamb and nini. Sadaka kidogo kidogo za ujinga hakutaka. You know, I was told, Bishop, that when Equity came, when Equity Bank came, and it was a joke, I think, by Churchill, that when you would go to Equity, when it was new, unaingiza kadi, unaweka pin, unatoa 50. Equity na ATM na kujibu na kikuyu. Ruta besha shiafata tiga wana. <laughs> for, those, <laughs> for those who don't understand the language we might speak in heaven, 
Uh, the <laughs> okay, let me be serious here. <laughs> it's, it's just a joke. Don't worry about it. Now, they had this God on, was such a notorious God that when you came to worship him, he, he was the, his direct representative and priest was Pharaoh. That's why when Pharaoh spoke, it was a God who had spoken. Not any other God on. Sasa alikuwa na kiburi huyu, huyu mungu that he demanded, don't bring me sadaka za mboga, sadaka za uh, 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 bulls and cows. No, I don't, I don't take that. If you come to worship me, bring me your first male child. That's, that's the only sacrifice he would take. So if you had no children for 15 years or you only had girls, on did not have a problem with you. The son God, he didn't have a problem with you. You see how elevated he had put placed himself or the Egyptians had placed him? Now, the, the, the Pharaoh reigning during this time when Moses is about to deliver the children of Israel, his name is Ramesses II. I mean, he is a Falme utawala wa Egypt, and he has no male child. So every year he's offering sacrifices, 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 and atarajia munguake on ampe kijana, so that this son can inherit his empire and be the 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 the, 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 the Pharaoh to come. After many years, somehow he delivered a baby boy. Kasema sasa, mungu amenibariki na kijana. He was torn between, do I offer him as a sacrifice to own for more blessings or do I save him to inherit me? He concluded, I will offer him as a sacrifice to own so that own can give me other, many other sons. So he started feeding this son, educating this son, nurturing this son, waiting for him to be a teenager so that he can offer him as a sacrifice. Have you ever saved money to buy your first dress? Have you ever saved money to buy your first car? Have you ever saved money to buy your first home? Can you imagine after you have saved, you are building this deposit, you are saving, and then wezi wapite nayo. How will that make you feel? I mean, you will. I remember growing up as a young boy, we used to wait for ASK Nakuru show. That was a big deal. Men, we, would, we had these things that we would place unakata and then every coin unatumwa, unarudishua change, you, pr- you go home praying, mom will give you that change. Unaweka kwa hiyo mkebe. We were saving the coins to go to the Agriculture Society of Kenya show. Manu, kifika na pesa zako, ma coins, you can buy yourself whatever you like, you can buy a hat, you can play games. It was a big deal. Now imagine somebody running away with your team. So Pharaoh was saving the son. It was his most important treasure. It was his most important investment. I am saving this for all. I can't wait when my son will be a teenager and I place him on the altar like Isaac was placed and offer him to own and unlock the heavens to bless me. Lakini nani anajua mungu wetu? Or let me put it this way. Na mungu wetu ni nani je? On the night of Passover, God decided, I'm paying a visit to the land of Egypt because my people must go to worship me. So he stopped by a city called Goshen and as he was passing by, he saw blood on the door frames of the Hebrews. I pray and hope your heart is covered by this precious blood. Mana ukiwa mefunikwa na damu ya Yesu. Ah, usalama salmini. Bwana sifuwe sana. So, akateremuka, akaingia Egypt kwenyewe. Akafika kwa palace. Where this son, amesevua in the innermost bedroom. Ah, his name is Yahweh. His name is Yahweh Elohim. Can I speak like an American? Let me introduce to you my God. The rock of ages. Ah, ancient of days. His name is Elohim. His name is God with us, Emmanuel. And as black Americans would say, and he bad. You see, if, if, if an African American say, don't play with Pastor Mnew's wife, she bad. 
That means he, he, she is beautiful. She is excellent. She is the number moja. So our God, he bad. Because when he decides to change your story, man, he changes your story. If he decides to promote you, nobody can demote you. If he decides to smile at you, it doesn't matter who is fighting you. So our God visited the Pharaoh's palace and he found this, this important investment being saved. Alipitanayo aje. Alinua huyo kijana akatembea through the gates. And he did not only carry the son, he also carried all the firstborn of Egypt, including human beings and animals. His name is Yahweh. His name is Jehovah. His name is Jesus. Nobody can stand him. When Pharaoh woke up in the morning and discovered his most important investment, second to his wife, is gone. Aliita Moses, Akamambia, you've been asking to go. You and your people and your animals and everything you have, get out of my nation. Then he, paid a, he made a public announcement to the Egyptians. These people, whatever they need, gold, silver, cloth, whatever they need, Give it to them so that they can leave our country. And in one night, God paid the Hebrews salaries and wages and bonuses worth 430 years in one instance. I came to announce to you, it does not matter how much you have been oppressed. It does not matter how bad your case has been. All it takes is God to step into your situation and change your story. I announce in this service, this God that we worship is coming for your case. He's coming for your marriage. He's coming for your daughter. He's coming for your son. That's why you cannot leave this house the same way you came. God does not need an ear to bless you. God does not need a week to change your story. All it takes is a moment of faith. And I pray that in this service, not tomorrow, I pray in this hour, may God remember you. May God shine his countenance towards you. May God visit you. May he remember your sacrifices, your offerings, your commitment. May he remember you by name. In the name of Jesus. Kwa hivyo haichukui mungu mwaka kubadilisha your story. Ah, are you listening to me? Let faith arise. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ask, think, or even imagine according to the power that is at work within you. 450 years worth of wages and salaries. Do you know what God was doing? He was paying for the trip from Egypt all the way to the land of promise. You remember that tabernacle of the wilderness? God was paying for it. God was building it in advance. Mungwetu anatabia ya provide in advance. Are you listening to me? Everything they would need to build the tabernacle, everything God would need, everything the priest would need, everything Israel would need, he provided it in one night. And it's not the only time he did it. When Jesus was born, the Bible says, when the wise men from the east designed the stars, they told their kings, and I told the early bird service, this was not three guys who brought gold, incense, and frankincense like they taught you in, in Sunday school or like that Christmas card looked like. It was not three people. These guys who discovered the star that is announcing the birth of the son of David, these were researchers. These were scientists. These are what we call today modern Persians or Iranians. These guys have been for years, for years, wamekua wamezingirwa na, na hali nkumu ya kiuchumi. Yani wamewekua vi, vikwazo, vikwazo na Amerika na inchi za, inchi, 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 inchi za, 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 za west. And yet the, Pash, the Persians, the Iranians have still been working on their bomb. Do you know why? Because these guys, awa kwanza ujuzi wa kiakili jana. They are the ones who discovered the star that was announcing the birth of Jesus. Let me, let me help you. 
Do you know this thing they taught you in form one, late form one, second term, form one, third term, known as algebra? And then you went to college and you did algebra one, algebra two. Do you remember iyo kitu iligunduliwa na hawa warabu? That thing they, they taught you in form three known as calculus. Uh -huh. You remember calculus? When you know you known as dust. <laughs> calculus. Do you remember something called logarithms? Eh, hey, awa ndio wali invert hiyo vitu. Wazungu walijifunza wakatuletea after ukoloni kutuonyesha ni yao. Haikuwa yao. The owners, the inventors were the passions. So back in the day, they had, they had labs, they had libraries studying the galaxies. And in their research, they discovered something strange that made them write a report and presented it before three emperors. When the emperors read this report, they said, we must quickly act. Why? Because he who placed the stars in our galaxies and positioned the planets and created the universe, the one that was from the beginning, the one by whom all things were made, he had stepped from his throne, removed his divinity, and dressed up humanity. He had stepped out of time, out of eternity, and entered into time. When the stars, the sun, the planets, the moon, when they saw yule ambaye ali to suspend into space, yule ambaye ali tuambia tutakuwa tunazunguka hivi, yule ambaye alisema tutakuwa tunaangaza hivi, ameingia katikati ya wanadamu ku, kuwatembelea, they bowed, they shifted position to worship him. And the passion so this is not normal. Stars have moved to announce a major catastrophic event that a king shall be born who shall rule the world without end. When the kings had the report, they said, is, the, is it even possible for such a king to be born that stars are worshipping him? They said, if he's born today, by the time he starts ruling, we will have died. Therefore, let's travel and pay an allegiance, build a relationship with him so that when our kids become kings and they are ruling, they will be in favor with him because we have paid attention, we have paid allegiance to him. Kwa hivyo hawa wafalme wakakusanya mali, dhahabu, feather, mane mane, incense, all these things. Now, when a president, if the president came to worship with us, you know sigari moja itatukelezea hapa. It will be an entourage. Sinikweli? Uh, come on, talk to me. Sinikweli? Now, you imagine a king. Back in the day. Not one king, not two kings, three kings. They are coming with horses, horses, horses. Chariots, chariots, chariots. Donkeys, donkeys, donkeys. They, all these are loaded. Carrying wealth. Coming to pay an allegiance to this king that has been born. But God was not just providing, God was not just sending kings to Jerusalem. No, he was providing in advance for himself. God knew that in two months, when Herod understand what has happened, he will kill all the baby boys. Joseph and Mary will need to do a long trip into Egypt. So part of the provision to pay for the tickets, to, pay, to buy the donkeys that are carrying their stuff. Part of that provision in Aletwa Nahawa Majama from the east. Not only that, when they enter Egypt, God did not want Mary going to look for a work permit in Egypt. No, 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 no. He wanted Mary to raise this baby in style, living at the at the, at the Karen of Egypt, living in Runda of Egypt. So God was providing in advance so that Joseph and Mary, they have no business working Kibarua somewhere kwa mjengo. All they are doing is taking care of God while he's in this human flesh. God was providing for himself. Now, did you know that when Jesus went to Egypt, he was two years old? And when he came back after Pharaoh died, he was 10 years old. Therefore, God was providing in advance for eight 
ears, everything they will dress, everything they will eat, everything they will need, their rent, their mortgage, whatever they will need. Mungu alituma na wafalme ikabebwa wakaletewa. Are you understanding? In other words, while he was still a baby, God provided up to 10 years. I came to announce to somebody who prayed this morning, give us this day our daily bread. I came to announce to you, God has your tomorrow taken care of. God has your next month taken care of. While you are in your July, God is sorting out your December. Uh, they are not here. Maybe they are here. While you are in your July, God is taking care of your next year. Is somebody understanding? I'm talking of a God who, while you are here raising a, a child as a single mother, wondering what will I dress this kid? What, how will I raise this baby? And God is speaking to you saying, not only am I raising this child with you, I've provided for his full tuition scholarship in an international university abroad. That's our God. And that's how he thinks of you. And that's what he wants to do for you. Is somebody understanding what we're talking about? That God can take care of you. So when God, when Jacob blesses his son, he's saying, my son, I am commanding the heavens. I'm commanding the moon. I'm commanding the stars to align themselves and work for you. By the way, unajua ni sisi tu wa kristo huwa tujali mambo ya jua na mwezi? Let me ask you a question. Why do you think a whole world religion, three billion people calibrate and decide when they will fast and when they will break their fast based on the positioning of the moon. Why do you think they do that? You just think it's coincident that it was written somewhere? Somebody knew the power of the moon. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? So Jacob was saying, as for you, my son, I'm commanding the blessing of the heaven. It shall overshadow you. Praise the Lord. Let me jump to the second blessing quickly and then we close. The second blessing, he calls it the blessing of the deep. The blessing of the deep. By the way, we've, we've just jumped a lot of stuff that I shared with the Alibad service. So you may want to watch that. that you may want to watch it on YouTube. We covered quite a lot. But listen, he blesses him. He says, Jacob, Joseph, I bless you. The heaven, the stars, the moon, these forces of nature, they shall coordinate themselves to bless your season, to bless your days, to bless your, your, your month. They shall bless your calendar. In season and out of season, Joseph, you are blessed. And number two, you cannot be cursed. Today, people read horoscope and they brag, hey, I'm Capricorn. Hey, I'm April. This month I'm going to experience a wonderful thing because, because it is my, my, my star tower set. Ah. We have the bright and morning star, the star of David. His name is Jesus. In other words, no matter what star they consult, no matter which star they worship, as for you, Joseph, I have blessed you with the blessing of the heavens, that the stars shall favor you, the stars shall favor you, the sun and the moon, they shall favor you. Glory to God. May that be your blessing. May that be your portion. Amen. Now, he also blessed him after providing security, he blessed him with the blessing of the deep that lies beneath. Meaning, he was blessing him with the blessing of the soil. Everything that comes from the soil, good soil, fertile soil, uh, minerals, water, whatever is in the soil, gold, diamond, everything that is hidden in the soil. He was saying, Joseph, not only are you blessed in the heavens, but everything that lies in the earth and beneath, I am instructing, I'm speaking into the atmosphere. Remember, blessings are just words from an authority figure. He's saying, as your father, I declare to the earth, to favor you and to produce for you and to work with you and to generate what you need for upkeep and survival. Therefore, that's why this guy could collect food for seven years and then save the world and save his generation because he was operating under the blessing of heaven. He could not be cast and the blessing of the earth.
That's why when he entered Potiphar's house, whatever he laid his hands to do, it was producing. Akipanda ngano, anapata mazao. Akipanda nyanya, anavuna. Because the soil had been instructed to bless him. Now, let me show you something here. Are we, are we getting blessed so far? Okay, let's try to wrap it up quickly here. Now, the earth, udongo, ama inchi, it takes after the character of its people. This is very important. Inchi inachukua tabia ya watu wake. When I say inchi, namanisha arthi, udongo, mchanga, the earth, it takes after the character of its people. Thank you. Thank you for that ministration. Are we together? So, if a nation is full of evil people, their earth, their soil, takes after their character. That's why the Bible says, righteousness upholds a nation. But sin is a disgrace to its people. Kwevyo inchi, ikiwa na watu ambao ni wabudu sanamu, ni waovu, ni wawaji, hiyo inchi inachukua tabia ya watu wake. Na ina, it becomes defiled and it attracts punishment from God. Now, if a nation has godly people, righteous people, even the soil takes after the character of the people inhabiting it and it attracts blessing. That is a principle. In fact, why don't I give you, why don't I give you scriptures and then you, we, can, we can bring this plane to a, to a landing. Let's read. Isaiah 24, verse 5 and 6. Isaiah 24, verse 5 and 6, the NIV. Isaiah 24, verse 5 and 6. We'll also look at Psalms 106 and verse 37 and 38. Aha. Uh -huh. Let's read together. The earth is defiled by its people. They have disobeyed the laws, violated the statutes, and broken the everlasting covenant. The land is defiled by its people. Can you give us... Uh, verse number 38, verse number 38 of the same, verse number 38. Verse 38, do you have it? Okay. If you don't have it, let's move on. Uh, let's read, let me give you another scripture that will speak to what I'm trying to say. Trying to show you that earth takes after the nature of its people. Uh, the scripture I am looking for is Psalm 1, Psalm 106, yes, Psalm 106, please make sure we get this one, Psalm 106 verse, uh, uh, and verse number 37 and 38, Psalm 106 and verse 37 and 38, this is crucial, listen, and especially for us as Kenya as we go into the elections, read this with me. They sacrifice their sons and their daughters to false gods. Uh -huh. They shed innocent blood, the blood of their sons and daughters, whom they sacrificed to the idols of Canaan, and the land was desecrated by their blood. Kwa hivyo nchi, watu wanapotenda maovu, wanachafua, wanachafua, wanatia mawa nchi yao. Tunelewa na sofa. Are we together? So if our politicians go and make sacrifices on uh, altars of evil, altars of demons, altars of Satan, they defile our land and pollute our land and our land reacts to that thing they have done. When land is defiled, it responds. This is what it does. It vomits the inhabitants out. When land is defiled, it vomits. Give me Leviticus 
Leviticus. I'm about to close just two scriptures. We will be praying. Leviticus 18 and verse 24 to 28. I want to show you. Please, this is very crucial. This is the center of what I'm targeting to hand to you. We, we will read 24 to 28. So stay with me. It says, do not define yourselves in any of these ways because this is how the nation that I'm going to drive out before you became defiled. Even the land was defiled, so I punished it for its sin and the land vomited out its inhabitants. Inchi, ikatiwa mawa, ikawatapika. Verse 26, God is telling the children of Israel, as you enter the land of promise, but you must keep my decrees and my laws. The native born and the foreigners residing among you must not do any of these detestable things. For all these things were done by the people who lived in the land before you, and the land became defiled. And if you defile the land, it will vomit you out as it vomited out the nations that were before you. Therefore, if land becomes defiled, it attracts the punishment of God and land can reject you. And there are people who have moved to a land and the land rejected them. Where would you honor what we Wherever they are coming from, they were successful businessmen in Nakuru, in, in Busia, in Eldoret, and they say, I am a success. Let me go and expand in Nairobi. Wanakuja Nairobi, Nairobi in our Qatar. Matatuzi na Anguka, Biashara in Afilisika, in Abidi Watoke Warudi Reserve. Have, have, you, have you seen such cases? Have you not seen somebody starts a business here in Zimmerman? It becomes big, it's growing, and I decide, ah, nani kama mimi nitaingia city center, ni expand uko. And I move city center, and I pata miungu ya city center ime mgoja. Iyo biashara alikuwa me succeed sana isili, akiingia Nairobi, and I apply alone, akuna. Kwanza ile goodwill wame muitisha, ni akumaliza. Alafu anaitisha loan, bank zina mkata. Analete wafanyikazi, after three months, wame mtoroka. It is land vomiting you out. Saying, you have no territory here. The gods of that land, that have defiled that land, they are saying to you, saying, uh -uh, you may be a jogo in Vihiga. You will not come here and, 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 and masquerade as a champion. The land vomits such a person and they go home. Ujona watu wamekuja, wame succeed, wame inuka, and then they become sick. And we take care for them. Not a month, not two months, five months, one year, two year. Tunafanya harambe, paka muishowe komitina na keti nasema, huyu, ata madaktari wamesema hawezi saidika. Tutafte gari, tumpeleke nyumbani, aende akapumzikia nyumbani. And at home, they just manage the pain. They just manage him. Mji umemkata. Have you not seen somebody buys a car? They were doing very well in their church. They were doing very well at their place of work. Their marriage was doing very well. But tangu wanunue hi hako kagari. Kagari kana wakata. Kila Saturday wako kwa garage. Hawapatikani fellowship. Hawapatikani kwa ushirika. Hata kanisani ya wakuji. Meka ni kamesema siku maliza Saturday jioni. Itabidi Sunday uje tumalize. Gari ina kukata na wewe hujui. Why? Because that car that you bought was auctioned. And the guy who owned the car. Na alishindo kulipa hiyo loni. Wakati ananyanganyo hiyo gari. Akalia machozi. Akasema mungu. Wananinyanganya gari yangu. Wasifuraie. Isibariki mtu. Sa we umendu that's why we dedicate vehicles. That's why we dedicate houses. Are you understanding? Bishop, while I was chaplain in Egerton University, because that's where I started, a young a third year student walked to my office and said, I need help. Now, when an agrochemist student in third year comes to you and is from Western, akuje kwa kwa kwambie, nimeshindwa na nyenyekea nataka usaidizi then you know it's a serious case because these guys are hard course this boy came and told me i need to see you you need to pray for me i said what's happening he said i am not sleeping i said why he unbuttoned his shirt and i got nervous i stood up 
because the office is small, this guy is unbuttoning. I don't want a case on my desk. Akafungua shati and showed me. Huku nyuma. Amechapwa mijeledi. There are marks. Ask him, what is happening? He said, every night I have to take the canes. Since when? Two years ago. Tell me the story. He narrated. I discerned what was happening. I called two other chaplains and we went to their home in Molo. This is the story. During clashes, the 97. Remember we had clashes in 92 and 97. This particular group of people burned houses. Huyu mzee alikuwa menunua kanyumba, amejenga kazuri. And then, watu wanafukuzwa, akahama, akacha hiyo nyumba na kila kitu ndani. But as they were running away, they made some prayers. They said, God, nyumba yetu inaenda. Mungu, wewe ambayo ulitupa hii mali, utukumbuke. Mtu asingie nyumba yetu. And they walked away. The people who took over the house, they knew the government of Kenya will come very soon to straighten things and return property to owners. So they decided to sell it quickly at a, at a lower price. This mze is from Kisi. Akona nyumba inatangazwa kwa Daily Nation. At a throwaway price, akaenda akainunua. Tangu walipohamia hapo, Kila siku, mtoto anachapwa. So we, when we visited with these chaplains, we went and talked to the mother and the father. They called the whole family. Their second born said, Ata mimi daddy, niko na hizo alama. Their third born, the father broke in tears. Why? I explained to the father, this house is rejecting you. Was it dedicated? Was it prayed for? Tell me how you got the house. Inchi inaweza kukutapi. Ndiyo mano kijenga kanyumba, apa, apa zima manama githuraya ma wherever, you call bishop and the pastors to come and dedicate it. Kwa sababu wajenzi wengine, mikono yao iliusika hapo, wale waliochora yo ramani, wengine hapa wametengeneza yo loan, makaratasi yako, ni, ni yowawa waliten. They have been doing it out of bitterness, out of anger, and a house can reject you. But in the name of Jesus, just like Jacob blessed his son with the blessing of the heaven. I come to bless you, not only with the blessing of the heaven, but the blessing of earth beneath. That Zimmerman and Kasarani will accept you. It will embrace you. It will work with you. Out at Apikwa na Nairobi, County he haita kukata, it will embrace you, it will work with you, it will cause you to flourish. Wherever you lay your, your, your step, you, you, you step with your feet, it shall be for your possession. This land shall not fight you, this land shall not reject you, because God is blessing it for you. Are you understanding? Let me prophesy to you. Ata wakati utagonjeka, upelekwe hospitali, ata iwe ni Kenyatta, si Kenyatta hospital iko juu ya hii inchi, tunatangaza inchi itakutakia mema, inchi itakutambua kama aliebarikiwa, because land can speak for you or against you. Oh, let me show you as I close, Jeremiah chapter 22 verse 29, this one we will read, Jeremiah 22 verse 29, read with me the NIV. Jeremiah 22 verse 29. Uh, is somebody getting blessed? Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Now, now, now. Jeremiah 20, 22 verse uh, 29. Please. Ah, skiliza, skiliza, skiliza. Hapa palikuwa na mtu, mtu kichwa ngumu, mtu ambaya metenda mungu maovu, paka mungu akasema, I will not even speak to you. I will not even handle you as God. I will speak to the land and ask the land to speak to you. God. Read. Let's read together in concerto. Oh, land, land, land. Hear the word of the Lord. Uh huh. Give me the next line. Come on, media. The computer has frozen. Aha. Uh -huh. Let's read together. This is what the Lord says. Record this man as if childless, a man who will not prosper in his lifetime. For none of his offspring will, will prosper, none will sit on the throne of David or rule any more in Judah. Mungu alikuwa mekasirika, akasema, land, you speak to this man and register him as childless and announce he will never prosper and none of his child shall be a ruler. 
Lan spoke to that guy as Charles. I came to announce to you in this year of the great catch, this land of Nairobi shall testify about you. This land of Nairobi shall embrace you and it shall announce you not as childless, it shall announce you as a mother of many. It shall announce you as a father. It shall announce you as prospered. And so wherever you go, it shall declare that's a child of God. Ata wakati umepelekwa hospitali wewe ni mgonjwa. That floor of the hospital shall announce that woman you've just brought in. That man you've brought in, he is righteous. He is a child of God. Hapa hata kasi kutatu. Hapa atatoka mwenyewe. Land, land, land. Declare these people as healed. Declare these people as healed. Declare them as prosperous. Declare them as favored. Declare them as children of God. Testify for your children. Joseph, I bless you with the blessing of heaven and the blessing of the earth. And even as I speak to you, listen, you are not a lord until you own land. That's why they are called land lords. So with this blessing of the earth and everything beneath, may the Lord bless you with your own land. You who has been a tenant for years, you who have been leasing, may God give you your own portion. You know, you are not a real Nairobian until you own a piece of Nairobi. May God bless you with your very own. And by the way, I'm not talking of a land that is owned by six people and each one has a title that looks, looks original. No, I'm talking of a land that is a blessing. A land that maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. A land that has no issue. Land that has no case in court. Yani ni yako na jinalako. Ata ukilogin kwa view sasa, kwa arthi sasa. Unaipata na jinalako, na taito yako. And nobody is contending for your land. May God remember you as a mother, as a widow, as a father. May God give you land. And as I prophesy, I'm not asking you to give God to give you. Uh, you know here in Nairobi, you people are funny. Bishop, I was looking for land. And I was taken And I'm not being arrogant and I'm not being proud. Nikaonyeshwa, land, munamuza land, hapa jameni, at the 60 by 40. He didn't just organic. 60 by 40. Utajenga nini? Okay, sawa, in the earth, umepata. Sasa unamua, e 60 by 40, nitai maximize. And you know what I've seen they are doing in, in uh, Pipeline and Umoja and uh, Atakayole? Wanainua gorofa, moja, na nyingine zinafesiana hivi. Kwa 60 by 30, 60 by 40. Kanainuka kaslim, kanyumbaka gorofa, kanenda gorofa sita. Sasa, mtu anatoka kazini, downtown ama wherever. Uku inje kumewaka jua ni kusafi, anashuka maat na gazeti yake, na kanyama amebeba, anasema leo ni siku njema, ni merudi nyumbani. Akifungua gate, ainame hivi, na anakaa fourth floor. By the time anafika fourth floor, ni kama amenyeshewa. Kwa sababu zile kamba za nguo zimehang, nguo zina drip maji. By the time anafika kwake, the first thing is to remove that shirt and put on a t-shirt because amenyeshewa. As I pray for God to give you land, I'm not praying for 60 by 30. I'm praying minimum 50, 100 by 50. May God can do it. Don't limit our God. Don't limit our Father. If he paid Hebrews in one night, he can remember you and give you your own land. No sitarajie Mungu akubariki tu hapa Nairobi. Let him bless you with acres in the village. Ah, we are talking of rich land. You know that Kiambu land? You know that Limuru Fata land? You know that Kirinyaga land? That Kisi land? That Migori land? May God remember you. I, I'm not talking of land ambao ilikuwa ni kware walichimba, sasa ni maji na chokora wanakaa huko. No, I'm talking of land. Ukita bishop a dedicate, anakuliza imeanzia wapi? Unasema imeanzia hapa. Tembea, tembea, teendelea, endelea, endelea skofu. Uko chini, ukipande yo mlima, hapo sasa ndio imeishia. May that be your testimony. May that be your story. Listen, when we dedicated our, 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 our watch, house of worship. Bishop has been there and mom. 
I was praying, and Bishop, hear me. For years, I dedicated people's houses. And Bishop, no, in Texas, we are really blessed. Texas is a rich state, and our people, and I'm very proud of Kenyan in diaspora, we are hard workers. Men, we work, and men, we build. Our people, wame barikiwa. I was dedicating, Bishop, I was dedicating houses, the five bedroom, six bedroom, ear in, ear out, ear in, and I'm driving my car and my wife here and our totoetu. Tunaenda, tunafanya ibada, I dedicate a house, I, ded I would dedicate like in a week, three houses. In a month, 12 houses. And when we are driving back home, no unajua waki dedicate nyumba, sisi tuatuchezagi, they chinja, they, I mean there is all kind of nyama, mbuzi, choma, chemsha, nini, it's a party after party after party. Now when we get into the car to drive, I am thinking, God, when will you remember me? I'm looking at my wife. I'm thinking, I'm looking at my children through the rear mirror. And I can see the questions in their, in their mind. Dad, you, you are praying for houses every day. When will we have our own Yumbaya Gorofa? I mean, we, we, I could hear those questions. And so I would drive quietly and I'm praying inside. I'm saying, God that's house number 37 and you have not remembered me then God came somebody say God came ah and when he came he came we go hey when he came he came even my elders couldn't believe that pastor can afford this because baraka zingine sinji ni mnatupeaga ah kisema atakubariki ana hakuna atakaezuia so when God came, he came big. He blessed us with our building as Victory Chapel. Na mimi kama mchungaji, haka nikumuka na yangu. Ya gorofa. Mukija tunafanya ushirika ndani. Na tunatoshea wanaume, na wanawake, na watoto. Na hata mkitaka tuwa separate. Tutawa separate na tuendele. Na hakuna mtu atagongana na mwingine. So when Bishop came, in the morning, he dedicated the church. And then in the afternoon, he dedicated my house. Ah, that day I was like, God, how you many remember? Um, tena kwa neighborhood. Hey! Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nina ishi na watu wa nguvu. Mungu aliniona. So when, when Bishop JB dedicated the house, he told me, my son, take me to the capital of your city. Kashindo, eh, mbuyo anatakaje, tukaingia kwa gari ni kampeleka. Haka niembe, endo uchote mchanga pale unilete. Our capital city, we have the courtroom, we have the municipal council, nini, nini, polisi, wote wako pamoja. Buildings vime surroundiana hivi. Haka niembe, hapa ndio makao makuu ya humji. Yes. Haka sema, actually, hata usichote mchanga, tuende. Tukashuka gari. Tukatembea. Haka inama, haka shika, haka sema, you soil of sexy. I speak to you as a father. Accept my son. My son shall not struggle in this land. Saksi, saksi, saksi. Favor my son. Umkubali. Apanuke. Aungezeke. Aendele. I am here to testify. Saksi has accepted me. Oh. Hey. Polisi wananijua. Wakubwa wananitambua. Na it is not by might. Ama ujanja ya ukikuyu ni fever ya mungu. Baraka za juu mbinguni na za chini ya nchi. So I announce wherever God is planting you, may that land accept you. May it not fight with you. May it receive you and favor you and cause you to flourish. Joseph, the blessing of the heaven, the blessing of the earth. But as I close, somebody is asking, but pastor, who ni jamaa, mbona nabarikiwa na the blessing of the womb and the blessing of the breast, I close with that. The womb is a place of delivery. Si wamama mnajue yo, it's a place of conception. 
Jacob was saying, my son, I bless your spiritual womb. You shall dream. You shall come up with ideas. You shall give birth to business ideas. Yani utaza mambo ambayo haya janzilishwa and they will turn your life right side up. I came to announce, may God bless you with the blessing of the womb so that from today onwards, you shall give birth to businesses. You shall give birth to ideas that shall make you a millionaire. Ah, they, ah, they are not listening. Is that, am I in the right church? May God give you an idea that you give birth to an idea that changes your story. Are you listening to me? Yani idea unaiza ina transfer your status. Equity ina kupigia simu. Maana, your status has changed. Because of an idea. Do you know you, all you need as a young man is to come up with an app. You know, an m app. Just an app that solves our problems and you become a multi-millionaire. So he was saying, my son, I bless you with the blessing of the womb. You shall imagine. You shall be creative. You shall be productive. You shall be a genius of ideas. And that's how Joseph could feed the whole of Egypt and neighboring nations just from ideas and thinkings that were coming from his spiritual womb that had been blessed by his father. Uwezo wa kuzaa, kuzaa mabiashara, kuzaa watoto, watoto wakimwili na watoto wakiroho. Yani you just come up with ideas, brilliant ideas. But you also get bless him with the blessing of the breast. Why would a man be blessed with the blessing of the breast? How many of you know the breast is for feeding, is for nurturing? Joseph was, Jacob was saying, everything you give birth to, I give you capacity to feed it and nurture it and grow it. Listen, unajua kuna watu bishop, they can start a business. Wanaweza wakanzisha salon, wanaweza wakanzisha kiosk, wanaweza wakanzisha biashara, but they don't have the blessing of the breast, that capacity to feed it and work with it, the patience to keep function, to keep working it, to keep investing. They don't know how to hire right. They don't know how to fire. They don't know how to apply for loan. They don't know how to pay their debts. They don't have the nurturing capacity. I can't to you as a servant of God and I bless you with the blessing of the womb but whatever you give birth you shall feed it you shall not give up after one day you shall not give up after one month you shall not give up after losing a little money you shall nurture it you shall feed it you shall work with it you shall stay you shall be patient until this little thing you have given birth gives you profit and becomes beneficial to your children and their children it's called the blessing Blessing of the breast. You know, kuna watu, tunaweza tukawapia huduma ya wanaume. Same, you are the men's fellowship coordinator. Tunampatia wanaume 50. After three months, wanaume ni, ni salasini. After another six months, hako na wanaume kumi. Huyo hana baraka ya matiti. Hana the blessing of the breast. Na mungine tunamuambia, hey, sister so and so, ata kama we ni single, ongoza hawa wa mama. Tunampatia wa mama kumi. Na ni kasitana tu kametoka college, na wapati wa mama kumi, utakua unawatembele, unaomba. But because she has the blessing of the breast, after three months unakuja, ulimpatia wa mama kumi, ako na 15. After another six months, ako na wa mama 30. After another year, anakuita Bishop Njo, Njo uone. Because wale wa mama kumi, amewa multiply, they are now 80. That little girl has the blessing of the breast. She calls these women, she prays for them, she visits them, she's in their Facebook, she's in their Instagram, she, when they fall sick, she visits them, anakumbuka birthdays of a toto wow, she's in their cases, she's in their business, she has the blessing of the breast. May God give you that blessing that enables you to take something so little and work with it and be patient and be uh, long-suffering until it grows. Buona sifuwe sana. So he blessed him with the blessing of the heaven, the blessing of underneath, the blessing of the womb, and the blessing of the breast. In this year of the great catch, may God give you these four blessings. 
and change your story forever and ever. In Jesus' mighty name. Stand up on your feet and let's worship the Lord. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Father, we give you praise. We honor you this afternoon. We worship you. We magnify your name this morning. Great is thine faithfulness. Would you thank God for the blessing of the heaven? Would you thank God for the blessing of the earth that he's bringing your way? Would you thank God for the blessing of the womb that God is releasing to your soul, to your spirit in Jesus' name? Thank God for the blessing of the breast. Father, we thank you. Father, we honor you. Father, we worship you. Father, we glorify your name. We announce today the sun, the moon, and the stars shall work for our favor. We announce today from here onwards, we shall shall give birth to ideas. We shall give birth to businesses. We shall give birth to sons and daughters, physical and spiritual in the name of Jesus. And whatever we give birth to, Lord, we shall nurture, we shall feed, we shall grow, we shall cultivate, we shall develop to the glory and honor of your name. We thank and we bless you. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for your children. I thank you that you hold our future in your hands. This morning, Lord, we pray for the blessing of the heaven over this congregation. Lord, remember your children that the sun, the moon, and the stars shall coordinate themselves to our favor in the name of Jesus. Oh, we release the blessing of the heavens that we shall walk under open heavens in Jesus' mighty name. We call for the blessing of the earth, the blessing that comes from the deep in the name of Jesus. Lord, remember your children. Bless them with land and the richness thereof in Jesus' mighty name. I pray for our young people that you shall give them the blessing of the womb, creativity, ingenuity, in Jesus' mighty name. Give them capacity to discover, capacity to build, capacity to create, capacity to start something, in Jesus' mighty name. We pray for every small, small business owner, every entrepreneur, Katika Jinala Yesu. Father, that you will give us the blessing of the breast, that we shall grow and nurture that which you place in our hands, that we shall be faithful with little, so that we can be masters over much. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you, Father. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. And somebody shouted, Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you.